talking about the things that matter most to you. Catholic Women Now. Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, and I am Julie Nelson. Good morning. I'm Chris Magruder. How are you today? Good. I like having you by my side doing this. <laughs> this is fun. Side by side, right? Here we go. Here, here we, we talk go. a little today about the sacrifice of praise. I know. I'm excited. I love this topic. We've done it before, but it's just such a good topic to remind people again. And again, I need the reminder from time to time in my life because I get in my little my little conundrums. And I think, oh gosh, Mm -hmm. I need to be praising God. And we're Mm going to talk, why should we praise God? The benefits of praising God and some experiences in our own lives. What is the sacrifice of praise? Wink, wink. That is a, uh, you hear that and it rolls off people's tongues. Sometimes you think, what is the sacrifice Mm -hmm. of praise? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about it. We have, but we're going to talk about it again. I know. (laughs) Do you want to start us out with a prayer? I sure. Let's listen and trust this next half hour to the blessed mother and her protection. In the name of the father and the son and the Holy spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if you've just joined us, and this is maybe one of your first times listening to us, we're calling it, we do this these shows without guests and we call them going unplugged. So today's an unplugged show at the sacrifice of praise and why we should praise. That's right. But let's start with our truth and beauty segment. We always do a truth, goodness, and beauty segment. You want to go first? You want me to try this today? You go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, my truth, beauty, and goodness today is just because we're talking about praise today. I have um, a young adult woman who is staying with us right now. And She had a bunch of people over last Sunday to our house and they went into the basement and what did they do? They got together to praise, just to hang out with each other and to praise. And I was like, wow. And what they do is they get together every Sunday night, um, usually at St. Francis, but last week they couldn't, their room that they normally use at St. Francis was being used. So they came to our basement. And they praised for a couple of hours. It was really amazing. Well, you know, Chris, you and I have been in on those experiences too with other women and just praising and worship. And, yes. And-, and the first time that I did that and I thought, oh, yeah, we're going to sing a couple of praise songs. And then it went on for two hours and I was like, whoa. But yeah. it, it, at first I was like, what's going on? And then mm-hmm. by the end, I was like, this is amazing. Well, you just feel an elevation of your soul. It's like you, heaven is rushing in. Yeah. You can just feel more of heaven around yeah, us. Yeah, it does become an actual, like you can feel it tangibly. It can. It's, yeah. it's truly amazing. It is. It mm-hmm. is really, really amazing. And there seems to be, there's a Holy Spirit you can tell the Holy Spirit movement in all of the mm-hmm. praise and worship. It kind of starts mm-hmm. out, you just praise, and then you move into worship, mm-hmm. and then you move into a deeper uh, co- uh, communion with God, with mm-hmm. Jesus and God, mm-hmm. and the all of heaven yeah. joins you. Yeah. The heavenly Amazing. choir. Yeah, it is really. So what's your truth, beauty, and goodness well, it's today? Kind of, it's kind of t- uh, tangent, tangents off yours. I, I didn't go, but I saw some photos and video on Facebook, but at St. Francis Recently, they had an African mass, and I think you were there. Oh, it was amazing. Talk about praise. They right. know how to do it. That's what I was thinking of. I mean, you, they, I, I saw the them processing out mm-hmm. where the girls were dancing, mm-hmm. and they all had their white dresses, and they were dancing and singing, and there was just such a freedom in that that I thought was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And and you know what it was? It was really cool. Next year, I would encourage all of you who live in the Des Moines area when they have the annual African mass, I believe it'll be at St. Francis next year. I think sometimes it's at St. Ambrose as well, but I mean, we got to fill that church because it it is a, the mass is just powerful alone. Right. But, but to have a different culture vibe kind of on the mass is just I don't know. It was really significant for me. I was in tears from the very beginning, Mm -hmm. just seeing how they came in dancing reverently. It wasn't, you know, it was just amazing. It was really amazing. They were dancing for the Lord. And then hear their drums and the African music. And it was really beautiful. Plus they had like 10 priests up on the altar and (laughs) it was really cool. Really cool. I know. I'm. I'm going to try to. I couldn't go this this year, but I'm going to try to go next year if I'm around. So, mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then we just want to just give a shout out to something that's happening in our community. Sure. Um. You. When I was gone in May, you had Keenan Fitzpatrick on the show. Yes. And he shared his incredible conversion story. He's a young man, um, who was not living in, living with God in any way. Was kind of living a life, a racy life. Had a powerful experience to, with him that, that is. In mass. In mass, mm-hmm. right. In mass. Mm-hmm. The veil was removed. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he will say the veil was mm-hmm. removed mm-hmm. and just the life changing experience. But I will tell you, this is a great talk. It's going to be October 10th 
and um, 5.30 Mass, 6.30 Talk in the Parish Hall at St. Pa- Augustine's Parish. It's the happy hour. Mm-hmm. They're going to have some light appetizers and drinks. Mm-hmm. But this would be great for young adults. Mm-hmm. And if, if young adults listening, I encourage you to come. If you know, if you have young adults in your family, invite them to come to this. Mm-hmm. Keenan is a very outgoing, personal guy. And yeah. he's just so full of enthusiasm. This is one of those shows. Now we've talked about a couple things for young adults because also the um, the praise group that gets together, they want more people to come join them too. And it is a growing group of young adults. So uh, St. Francis Sunday nights, they praise too. So yeah, a lot of good things for young adults these days. Well, there is. But you know, I think we need to do something for older adults too. <laughs> here, you know, We like to praise and worship too. That's right. Well, let's Let's get started. Let's just talk a little bit about what is praise yes. to start with. What just, is praise? Basic, yeah. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you, read the catechism. The catechism um, 2649 says, the prayer of praise is entirely disinterested and rises to God, lauds him and gives him glory for his own sake, quite beyond what he has done, um, simply because of who he is. He's God. Right. You know? Right. And and that's something, I mean, we know how to praise one another, you know, for things that we do for who we are, but God is just God himself. We praise him. It's, it, that's a whole different level of praise. He's worthy you right. know, and of praise for nothing more than the fact that he's God he, and everything that we have that's worth praising is from him. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And yeah. we, we, that's right. We praise him for everything. Hey, right. Mm-hmm. Everything we have, everything that we are, we are mm-hmm. from God. He created us. Mm-hmm. So we are praising and worshiping the, the one who created us mm-hmm. out of love, mm-hmm. out of love. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the the big question I think a lot of people think is, what? well, go ahead. What were you going to say? Does God need praising? Right. Right. Does, I mean, he's God. He's, he's you know, omnipotent. Yeah. He, yeah. You know, is so, you know, I used to think, well, my question was always, well, I thought God was humble and that's kind of arrogant that he needs praise and he doesn't need praise. That's the point. He doesn't need praise, but why do you, why do we praise then? Well, God knows that actually by us praising him, we we're the ones that need it. We benefit when we praise him. And isn't that the way that our loving God is? Everything is for our benefit and to come closer to him and to feel his presence, right? Well, and you said, you said one of the key points, I think when we praise him, we draw closer to him. So we get closer to him. What happens when you get closer to God? What happens when God comes closer to us? Who doesn't want to stay around? Right. Right. The yeah. evil one. He, right. he, he'll flee. Mm-hmm. You know, when people start praising and we're drawing closer to God and he's drawing closer to us, um, he's always there, of course, but, but there's something that happens and the evil one does not want to be around for uh, that. Why? Because he cannot stand in his pride. Just have somebody else be praised besides him. Mm-hmm. So it, clean, it. it you you quite literally can clean up an atmosphere with that. That's a, that's a, that's a good point. At the atmosphere shifts. Uh huh. You know, there's just not just in the natural. This is a supernatural experience that we we have when we do this praise and worship. And you know, I remember we had Kathleen Beckman on one time talking about spiritual warfare, and she said a lot of people will play like Gregorian chant really low in their mm-hmm. house, mm-hmm. even when they're not there. I will. If I'm having a difficult time, especially if I'm having a difficult time, I will turn on the radio to praise and worship music and leave it going all day mm-hmm. in and out when I'm in and out of the house and stuff. It's amazing how praise will strengthen our joy and in bad times, it can ease our pain and our difficulties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yes. And we can talk, we'll talk a little bit about some of those things um, as we, as we get into the show. So uh, those- yeah. Yeah, one of the things we're going to talk about later in the show is praising in difficult times mm-hmm. because um, mm-hmm. that, that's a challenge, right? Mm-hmm. It's a challenge. And mm-hmm. um, and we're going to talk a little bit more of that and share some of our experiences with yeah. that as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, you're listening to Julie Nelson and Chris Magruder on Catholic Women Now. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about praise and why it's important, why it's healthy for us, um, how we can love God better. And um, what else are we going to talk about, Jules? A little, little bit about the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of praise. That's yeah. right. So stay tuned. Would you like to highlight a birthday, anniversary, or other special occasion? You can do that by underwriting a day of broadcasting on Iowa Catholic Radio. For a monthly gift of $300 or more, your message will be heard on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network throughout the day of your choosing. It's the perfect way to honor your memories and milestones while supporting your favorite radio station. Dates go quickly, so reserve yours now. Call 515-223-1150 or email Deacon Mark at Iowa Catholic Radio Com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotation.
Foundation's hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences, mchs.edu. To all our family of listeners, we want to say thank you for your generous support during Iowa Catholic Radio's fall fundraiser. Your gifts make all the difference in ensuring the future of Iowa Catholic Radio. If you didn't get a chance to pledge, it's not too late, and matching dollars are still available. Donate now at iowacatholicradio.com to help continue this important work of connecting listeners to Christ. We are family. Again, thank you for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, where we're discussing praise and worship and why we praise God and the sacrifice of praise. We'll talk about a little bit in in, uh, in this segment. And we were just finishing up about um, uh, how, why does God need praise, which we said, no, he doesn't need to be praised because he's God. Praising is for us. So we're just benefits been, us. Benefits us. Yeah. So we're just mm-hmm. figure, uh, wrap wrapping up in the last thing of the benefits, but there are a few more benefits we'd like to to say in this segment before we move on to the next, next uh, question. I, I, about I think, this. you know, for me, I've seen how it actually helps, you know, lift anxiety because when you start praising, you really are acting like who we are. We're citizens of God's kingdom. So, you know, we're, we're created to worship God, our creator to live in the kingdom. So when I praise, I'm behaving like a citizen of the kingdom with these expectations that God is good and I trust him to be good. And of course he is. But when I trust that he is good, I act like the real me, God's child. I trust him. I love him. Um, I become the more authentic me. I become good. You know what I mean? Yes. So it it helps us. Things become properly ordered when you praise and worship. You know, I just think about Romans, a renewal of the mind. It's just like it turns your mindset around from looking at the, through like a narrow lens of ourselves to looking at the world through God's eyes, Mm. you know, and, and just, and then that love and that trust. But, you know, the one thing that is so beautiful for me in all this, Chris, is by opening up this way through praising God, I open myself to allow God to bless me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to feel like we are worthy of that blessing. Mm -hmm. And, um, but when we're praising and worship, we become like, um, inflamed with his love for us. It's that authenticity. Again, that, like you're a citizen of heaven. Yes. We're yeah. walking in the, the, the kingdom of light, not in the kingdom of darkness. And you know what? When you're doing that, it's not stressful on a person. No. What can result from that health, healing, especially when you're worried or you're anxious about something? Well, and you mentioned how the anxiety eases when you start praising. I start to feel peace mm-hmm. and God works in the peace. Yeah. He doesn't Opposite. work. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't work in the chaos of mm-hmm. our emotions. He works in that peace. And that's where you kind of talk about, you know, the healing that can happen. Yeah. And our unbelief that we have can result in belief. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that is a result of, or the, the peace comes from that too. And um, I don't know, I guess just because we're looking at all the goodness of God and believing he is good, that peace comes. It does. And, you know, I'm going to throw something in here that maybe is a little deeper thinking is, you know, God created us in love mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. And it's that love that he's put in us and their creation to connecting to that love he has for us. Yeah. There's that, that union that happens. All That's things so good. good come from God. And all we're doing is giving it back to him really, aren't we? When mm-hmm. we praise him, you're giving him the honor. Yeah. The honor what he, and the grace. He's worthy. He's, he's worthy. worthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and the word worship comes from the word worthy. So it, it makes sense. But everything we have, everything that we are, anything that is good comes from him. That's right. It's worthy of praise. It is. Yeah. So, Why not? So how do we praise? Yeah. How do we praise? I think, you know, <laughs> we Catholics are so blessed to have the sacrifice of praise. Another word for that is the mass, right? There's so many places in the mass speaking of praising God mm-hmm. and um, just really ask God before you go into mass or as mm-hmm. you're sitting down and saying your prayers before mass, Lord, show me mm-hmm. the moments of praising yeah. you. you know, mass. The mass is the most powerful way that we can praise. It's the most powerful prayer that we can say, but it's also the most powerful way that we can praise. It's pure it's this perfect offering um you know it, it's it's a perfect prayer really a, the perfect prayer of christ to the father where we're invited to participate 
And when we, when we participate in the Holy Mass, just our daily lives, the praises that come through our daily lives take form and they shape, and we can give them to the Father. And of course, the priest is up there offering the sacrifice on the altar, and we can join in that offering of the sacrifice of Jesus to him. I think it's just really, truly amazing. Of course, you know, the, the priest is up there. And he's leading the mass, but we're, we're all one with him as mm-hmm. we do, as we do that. So, I um, mean, it, it's really the, the perfect praise just in everyday life. And it extends the, we can extend those beautiful fruits that we get in the mass out into life too. So praise, praise of the mass can extend beyond the mass. Um, and it just makes more life, more powerful, uh, more joyful, actually, I think. So for those of you who are following Father Mike Schmidt's Catechism in the Year, um, he, he does a really nice explaining this. He talks about going back to the book of Genesis and the two sons of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. And one of the first things they're doing in the book of Genesis is making a sacrifice. And now he doesn't go into why. That's not the purpose of this discussion. And But we find out then that Abel's sacrifice is accepted by God and Cain's is not. But there again, we don't know why and we're not going into that today. But then you fast forward to Exodus and the Hebrew people are enslaved. And God says to Moses, you go to Pharaoh and you say to Pharaoh, let my people free um, to go and worship me. And the point of freedom is is leading is being led to worship God, but not just freedom from something, but freedom for something. I think that's important important too to understand so what what, um so it's not to go to the promised land is is to well it is to go to his promised land heaven right land and to clean the worldwide blessing for people that god can keep his promises but also for their freedom to worship Mm -hmm. and 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 then the thing that goes on then um so he goes to pharaoh and pharaoh says all right go go take your you know take a few ox take a few you know cattle and stuff and moses says, no i need to take it all and pharaoh and i thought maybe moses was just trying to trick pharaoh trying to get mm-hmm. you know more get it all but really that was truth when moses said i had to take it all because god moses did not know what god was going to ask of him to sacrifice an ox or a cattle or a goat or whatever and the same way for us i mean in in our lives too that we don't know what God is asking us for a sacrifice. So the sacrifice is praise. It's not like, well, I'll offer you what I think I should offer you or what I want. The sacrifice is offering what God is asking us to sacrifice. And you talked about that, Chris. Everything is from God, right? Mm-hmm. Our heart, if he wants our heart, mm-hmm. he gave me the heart. If he wants us, you know, if I give to something in charity, he gave me the means to give to charity. It all goes back to him. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, it's, we we think of those sacrifices that they did, the the animal sacrifices that they did in the Old Testament, but the holy sacrifice of the mass completes, and of course it surpasses all the sacraments, excuse me, all the sacrifices of the Old Testament. So isn't it amazing? And you know, not only does the sacrifice of praise our mass um, do all these things, but it also is a way of uniting us as church, us as the body of Christ to his praise, when I say his, I mean, Jesus's praise, Jesus's intercession for all of us. Um, so that sacrifice of praise to the father is offered through him with him in him. We've heard that before, haven't we? <laughs> I was just thinking that when you were talking about this, uh-huh. I was just thinking those words from mass. Yeah. You know, I was reading in the catechism that in the catacombs, the church is often represented as a woman in prayer with her arms stretched out in a like a praying position. And like Christ, who stretched out his arms on the cross through him, with him and in him, she, this woman, is offering herself and interceding with all men. I think that's a beautiful picture. Yeah, well, that is you know, the woman beautiful. in the catacombs. Yeah, yeah. that is very yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I just want to say, you were talking about um, the through him, with him, and how we're all part of that. I just think how beautiful that you and I and all of you listening get to be part of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a sac- that's a praise right there, right? You know, right. praise and worship. So. Amen. Yeah. What I love about um, praise is it is what happens on the inside or the outside, but either way, we're recognizing God for who He is, and that I think is where you know one of the things that I, you and I have talked about before is ABC praise. When you're starting to you know learn to praise, you're like, I don't I don't know how to do this, um, but we always say just tell God who He is. And maybe start with, you know, go alphabetical, go, God, okay, you are the alpha, the omega. You are um, beauty itself. You are caring. You are divine everything. healer. You, you know what everything. I mean? Yeah. yeah. D comes before E, Julie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, so, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to say. I was thinking about what I was going to say after D. 
<laughs> but you don't have to stay alphabetical. Once you get on a roll, you know what I mean? It just becomes this beautiful praise in where your your heart's really in it. And so what do you do for X? Yeah, I got to ask you that. What do you do yeah, for that's, X? That's the hard one. Well, you know, Jesus went ahead of us to prepare a room for each of us in heaven. So I say, God, you are the X marker on that room for me that's waiting for me to get there. I so love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, All yeah right. thank you. All right. <laughs> that's a fun one. Well, if you just joined us or you've been listening, we are talking about praise, praising God, sacrifice of praise. Uh, this is Catholic Women on Iowa Catholic Radio. We're going to take a little break and we'll be back with more. Calling all ladies to spiritual warfare featuring Jonnet Williams in person from EWTN's Women of Grace. Saturday, November 11th at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in West Des Moines. The day includes three talks, Holy Mass, Rosary, Continental Breakfast, and a special opportunity for prayer requests. Ticket prices start at $30. Visit iowacatholicradio.com for more information. And don't miss Spiritual Warfare with Jonnet Williams and Iowa Catholic Radio. Connecting listeners to Christ. Attention pro-lifers, help us celebrate life by attending Pulse Life Advocates Pro-Life Christmas Gala. You will enjoy a great combination of Christmas entertainment and a meal, along with our inspiring speakers that will be attending this event. The date is Saturday, November 18th at the Iowa Event Center in downtown Des Moines. You can get more details at pulseforlife.org. pulseforlife.org. We hope to see you this November. Support for programming comes from Klein Electric, a local family-oriented electrical contractor, a 100% employee-owned company with branches across the Midwest to provide comprehensive electrical services. Klein Electric is able to help with any residential and commercial project. Learn more at kleinelectric.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, where we are talking about praise and worship. And in this segment, we're going to go into more about when the well, we talked about the Mass, the highest form of praise and sacrifice of praise. Now we're going to talk about um, the parts of the Mass where we praise God, because I think it's so often we go into Mass, we're so used to doing it, we say the words over, same thing over and over again. But we'd like to really like underscore this for you highlight these moments of praise so when you go to mass next time listeners we're going to challenge you to really look into this and then just allow your heart to follow your words Mm -hmm. and praise god Mm -hmm. with all the angels in heaven around the altar right and all the saints, the souls of purgatory, they're, yeah. they're all praising with us yes so we're all there in this beautiful symphony of praise the whole mass is really a sacrifice of praise to God. And when you think of the priest and he says things like almighty and eternal God, he's clearly directing the prayers for us with him to heaven. Um, you know, and we respond with our amens, et cetera. But some of the more obvious examples, you know, within the mass of praise, some obvious examples of praise would be um, the hymns, the songs that we sing, the antiphons that we sing when we're gathering or at the offertory or at communion. So those are all going to be moments anytime we sing. I th- who was it? What was the saint's name? I don't know. said but... when you pray or when you sing, you pray twice. I've heard that attributed to several saints, yeah. but it does. It's, it's, a that be- is. it's a beautiful quote. Yeah. So, um, you know, but each of the proper prayers of the mass itself begin with words of praise. And, you know, when we finish hearing, for example, the gospel, what do we say? Praise be to God. You're right. You know, mm-hmm. um, so many times like that in the mass. Yeah, I, I love the amen because I always in my head I'm saying I believe. Uh huh. I believe. I uh-huh. believe this praise. I believe you are, you are who you are. You, I believe. Perfect example when you receive communion, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. I believe. There you go. Amen. amen. The Gloria. You know, in the times of the year where we say the Gloria, the song that the shepherds sang to the angels. Um, you know, they were praising God that first Christmas night when, uh, I think that's one of the clearest examples of praise that we see throughout the mass. When we sing the Gloria or say the Gloria, I think the the beautiful words in the Gloria is we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I will praise that. I will use, pull those out and use them in my own praise and worship on my own outside of mass. Mm -hmm. I'll use the words of the mass. Mm -hmm. You know, the one that I like to pull out is, you know, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. That comes out of me outside of mass sometimes too. All of a sudden you're going, holy, holy, holy. And you realize, ooh, he is mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. holy. 
Uh-huh. And then there's a, a priest here in town at his masses. I just love him. He goes, lift up your hearts. And I just, every time he says it, I feel that surge in my heart. Uh-huh. You know, it's like yeah. he has his arms up yes. and it's like, yes. Uh, he he gets it, doesn't he? Yes. Just by the way he's saying it, I've, I've been to his masses. And then we've got the Psalms and the scriptures themselves are, again, both inspired by God and, of course, designed by him as a way that he wants himself to be praised. And it's especially true when you read the Psalms, you know, and one of the things that I find interesting as we were saying earlier, how, um, when we praise a lot of times our anxiety will lift. And I know that there are counselors that will say, if you're depressed, read the Psalms. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So doesn't that make sense? Um, but more than anything else, the celebration of the Eucharist itself, both the Eucharistic prayer and the people's responses throughout the mass, especially the reception of Holy Communion, they're all fundamental acts of the highest worship that we can give, you know, which makes me want some of my Protestant friends to come on over. Yeah, come on <laughs> over and let's come praise on. and worship at the mass. Yeah. I mean, we, you and I have praised and worship in, in praise and worship moments with our, our Protestant brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Why not invite them to the mass to yes. praise and worship? It's yes. nothing like a praise and worship service at a yes. Protestant church. It, you right? know, in the mass, we adore God for who he is and we give him praise in the midst of, of our, the whole congregation of his people, not just the people here on earth, like you were saying, Julie, but the saints in heaven, the, the your loved ones, your deceased loved ones, oh, yeah. the, point, the angels mm-hmm. with them all, mm-hmm. you know, mother Mary, pretty, pretty amazing. It is very amazing. It is yeah. very amazing. And another thing is, is, um, always think about this I am in difficult times to praise. Mm-hmm. And, I, and that's when it's hard to praise. And it's hard to praise. It's hard to remember. And, and you're right. And sometimes you get in the difficulty and you're consumed by the, the, the whole details and what you're feeling and your emotions. But once you are able to start praising, it shifts. Almost immediately, you start to feel a little movement in a mm-hmm. different direction in mm-hmm. your heart. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it's so beautiful. And we have examples from our own life mm-hmm. of when we praised God in difficult situations or situations that didn't go like we had mm-hmm. planned. Yeah. I had one where I was in um, my car and my car started to smoke in the midst of really thick um, rush hour traffic. And <laughs> I remembered a, a friend of ours challenged us when you get into a difficult time, praise. And so listeners, we are challenging you right now as well. When you get into a difficult time, try to remember to praise. And I, I just asked Lord God that you help us to remember those difficult times, which we always run into, often run into, help us to remember to praise you. And so I did. I remembered. I said some quick praise, and then I called 911. It felt like it was only two minutes, and there was this kind police officer there. Two minutes later, a tow truck got myself um, to my meeting on time for my report, which was amazing. And then um, the shop that was taking care of my car called me and said, we're going to take care of the cost of this for this and that reason. And I went, what? And all I could do is say, thank you, God. I attributed it to the fact that he helped me to remember to praise him in that moment. And you weren't anxious. And you it didn't worry. You right? were anxious. You weren't worried. And you right. just, you just, you had that trust. Yes. You trust and you loved him. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You were walking. I tried. I tried. And it, well, and it, it did came. make a difference. Yes. Yeah. 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 It truly. I mean, and, and I've had, I have a couple others that I can tell you, but that, that's mine. Do you have one? Cause we have well, about a minute. Yeah. We have a minute. Now I'll make it quick. And it, it was one when, um, years ago when, um, my husband and I were moving to Kansas City and had, we had one day to find a house to rent. And I was very pregnant. I was seven months pregnant with our third child. And it was the end of the day and we were tired. We were hot and we had gone through the, we went through the want ads in the newspaper and we were, we were striking out, finding places. And we really needed a phone book. That was one thing we could have used. And I, back in the days when you needed a phone book, that's right. <laughs> Kids look it up if you don't know what it is. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we were pulled in to get gas and I was sitting there in the car. I was like, okay, I'm going to start praising you God, because I, you know, I praise you for this life within me. I praise you that, you know, we, you provide for us and you're, you know, all these things. And Lo and behold, this man pulls up in a truck and he's delivering phone books and he gives me <laughs> one, even though he's not supposed to. And then later on, we went and had dinner. We found a house. It was more money than we wanted to spend, all this kind of stuff. And uh, we went to dinner and I was walking around the little strip mall and a realtor walked out of uh, her office and I was just talked to her about what we were doing. And she said, she just looked at me. And she said, that's a good deal. You should take that, that you should rent that house. Mm-hmm. And I was like, thank you, God. It just took away all the stress, all the anxiety. Mm-hmm. Cause I knew in the praise that he was going to answer, right? He provided, he provided. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wow. listeners, if you have stories of this, why don't you send it, send them to us uh, on our Facebook page at Catholic women. Now we'd love to hear about your stories too. We would. Should, well, should we go out and pray? Let's go out and pray. Okay. 
name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Lord God, we know the best way to praise you is just your son's name because you can't refuse to hear it. So we praise you, Lord God, through your son, Jesus' name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go do impossible things with God. Today's Catholic Women. On the voice for Catholic Women Now. Iowa Catholic Radio. Here we go.